You know, if you've been following the news lately, you might have noticed something pretty big happening in China's financial world, especially in the auditing sector. Imagine this, the skyscrapers of Shanghai, each one representing the global giants like PwC, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte, which have long dominated the landscape. But now, the ground beneath them is starting to shake, signaling a change that could ripple across the globe. Think of it like a massive game of musical chairs, where PwC just lost its seat. They've been hit hard, mainly because of their involvement with Evergrande, a name that's probably familiar to anyone watching the economic news. Evergrande's troubles have put a spotlight on PwC, leading to some serious fallout. But here's the kicker, as PwC gets pushed out, EY and KPMG are stepping in to fill the gap. They're like the runners-up who get to sit in the empty chair, for now. But if you're thinking EY and KPMG are safe, think again. This isn't just about PwC having a bad day at the office. There's a bigger picture here, where the Chinese government seems to be rethinking its relationship with all these big international players. It's almost like they're putting EY and KPMG on notice, enjoy the chair while you can, because the music might stop for you too. So, what does this all mean? Well, if you're working with or investing in these firms, or just watching the global market, this shift could be huge. We're not just talking about a few lost contracts, we're talking about the potential for a complete reshuffle in one of the world's largest economies. And that could have a domino effect on how business is done, not just in China, but everywhere. PwC, one of the giants of the global auditing world, has found itself at the center of a storm in China, and it all started with their involvement in the audit of China Evergrande Group. Now, Evergrande isn't just any company, it's one of the largest property developers in China, but also one of the most indebted. When Evergrande's financial troubles came to light, it wasn't just a company issue, it became a national concern. PwC was responsible for auditing Evergrande's books, and as the scale of the debt crisis emerged, questions started being asked about how such significant financial risks had gone unnoticed for so long. Imagine being the one who's supposed to check that everything is in order, and then finding out that everything is actually falling apart. That's essentially what happened with PwC. As the Chinese government and regulatory bodies began digging deeper, PwC's role came under intense scrutiny. The focus wasn't just on the numbers, but on whether PwC had fulfilled its duties in spotting and reporting financial irregularities. And in a country where economic stability is of paramount importance, this wasn't something that could be brushed off. The fallout was swift and severe. PwC saw an exodus of clients, many of whom were major state-owned enterprises, companies that play a crucial role in the Chinese economy. The Bank of China, China Life Insurance, and more than 40 other firms decided to cut ties with PwC. This wasn't just about one firm losing business, it was a clear signal that trust had been broken. When state-owned enterprises, which are deeply connected to the Chinese government, start distancing themselves, it's a sign that the issue is much bigger than just a few bad audits. But why such a drastic reaction? This isn't just a case of PwC making a mistake. It's part of a broader trend in China where the government is re-evaluating the role of foreign firms in strategic sectors, particularly those tied to national security and financial stability. Auditing, by its nature, involves access to sensitive financial data, and the Chinese government appears to be growing increasingly uncomfortable with foreign firms having such a significant role in this area. Consider this, for years, the big four accounting firms, PwC, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte, have dominated the auditing scene in China, handling some of the country's most important companies. But as China continues to rise as a global economic powerhouse, there's been a noticeable shift towards reducing reliance on foreign expertise. The government is pushing for more control over sectors that they deem critical to national interests, and auditing is one of those sectors. What we're seeing with PwC isn't just a temporary setback, it's likely the beginning of a broader trend where foreign firms, especially in areas as sensitive as auditing, may find themselves increasingly marginalized. The Chinese government has been encouraging the growth of domestic auditing firms, and we could see more of the country's major companies turning to these local firms in the future. For PwC, and the other big four, this means the challenges in China are far from over, they're likely just beginning. This situation also raises broader questions for global businesses operating in China. If a company as established and reputable as PwC can find itself on the outs, what does that mean for others? It's a reminder that in China's rapidly evolving business environment, being an international giant isn't a safeguard against regulatory and political risks. For PwC, rebuilding trust in China will be an uphill battle, 
one that will require more than just fixing the immediate problems, it will require navigating a complex landscape where the rules of the game are shifting. When PwC found itself in the crosshairs over its audit of Evergrande, the ripple effects were immediate. EY and KPMG, sensing an opportunity, quickly stepped in to fill the void left by PwC's abrupt client exodus. It's as if two seasoned players took advantage of an opening in the game, snatching up what they could while the opponent was down. EY, in particular, managed to secure more than half of the clients that had dropped PwC, including some of China's most influential state-owned enterprises, SOEs. Meanwhile, KPMG also capitalized on the situation, winning contracts with major players like China Telecom and various other state-backed firms. On the surface, it looks like a win-win for these firms, gaining a significant foothold in one of the world's largest markets almost overnight. For now, this shift seems like a massive windfall for EY and KPMG. They've not only expanded their client base but have also solidified their presence in a market that has been notoriously difficult for foreign firms to navigate. The influx of new business from PwC's former clients allowed these firms to potentially increase their revenue and market share significantly, which in the short term, is a huge victory. However, the reality may not be as rosy as it appears. The Chinese government has been increasingly vocal about its desire to reduce reliance on foreign firms, particularly in industries that it deems critical to national security and economic stability. Auditing, with its access to sensitive financial information, is definitely one of those industries. The government's shift towards a dual audit system, where a combination of international and local firms is required for auditing large, strategically important companies, is a clear indication of where things might be heading. Take the example of the Bank of China. Previously, they relied entirely on a big four firm for their auditing needs. But now, they've switched to a model where the big four handles the international aspects, while a local Chinese firm audits the domestic operations. This isn't just a one-off scenario, it's becoming more common across the board. And it signals that even though EY and KPMG are enjoying a temporary boost, they might not be immune to the same pressures that pushed PwC out. If the Chinese government continues on this path, we could see a gradual shift where more and more of these important contracts are handed over to domestic firms. After all, the long-term goal seems to be self-reliance, especially in sectors that are key to maintaining control over the economy. For EY and KPMG, this means that the current wave of new clients could be a short-lived victory. The writing on the wall suggests that they too could eventually face the same fate as PwC if the government decides that the benefits of having foreign firms involved no longer outweigh the risks. The bigger picture here is that China is moving towards a model where local firms are playing an increasingly prominent role. For global firms like EY and KPMG, the challenge will be how to navigate this evolving landscape. They need to figure out how to maintain their foothold in China while adapting to the government's shifting priorities. If they can't, they might find themselves in the same position PwC is in now, on the outside looking in. China's strategy to phase out the big four accounting firms, PwC, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte, is part of a broader, more deliberate plan than it may first appear. This is not just about holding foreign firms accountable for their missteps, it's about a strategic shift aimed at reducing foreign influence in critical sectors and tightening control over its economic infrastructure. 1. The two-step process, China is implementing a gradual, two-step process to phase out the big four. In the first step, these firms are still allowed to operate, particularly in handling international aspects of audits or partnering with local firms for domestic audits. This approach helps to maintain stability during the transition, ensuring that there's no sudden disruption to the financial systems. The second step, which is already in motion, involves increasing the reliance on local firms to handle domestic audits entirely. The long-term objective is clear, China intends to completely remove the big four from its domestic auditing market and replace them with homegrown firms that align more closely with national interests. 2. Why this gradual approach? China's decision to use a gradual, two-step process is primarily about maintaining stability while preparing for a more self-reliant future. If China were to abruptly cut ties with the big four, it could lead to significant disruption, not just for the companies involved but for the broader financial market as well. By phasing out these firms over time, China gives its domestic firms the opportunity to build capacity and expertise, ensuring that when the transition is complete, there will be minimal impact on the economy. This strategy also buys China time to manage any potential backlash from foreign investors and governments. 3. Geopolitical tensions and national security concerns The move to phase out the big four is closely tied to the current geopolitical landscape. 
As tensions between China and the West, particularly the United States, continue to rise, there's an increasing focus on national security. The Chinese government is concerned that allowing foreign firms to maintain a significant role in critical sectors like auditing could expose the country to undue influence or even manipulation. The big four, with their extensive global networks, are seen as potential risks because they handle sensitive financial data that could be leveraged in ways that might not align with China's national interests. 4. The decline of cross-border financial interactions, this shift is also a reflection of China's broader strategy of decoupling from Western financial systems. As regulations tighten on both sides, and with the growing emphasis on national security, the likelihood of Chinese companies seeking listings on Western stock exchanges, especially in the US, is diminishing. Already, we are seeing fewer Chinese firms pursue overseas listings, and this trend is likely to continue. As China focuses more on building its domestic markets and using Hong Kong or mainland exchanges for listings, the role of international firms in China's financial ecosystem is expected to decline further. This will lead to a decrease in cross-border financial interactions, signaling a shift towards a more insular economic model. 5. The risks posed by the Big Four From the perspective of the Chinese government, the Big Four aren't just auditors, they're gatekeepers of vast amounts of financial information that could be sensitive or critical to national security. The concern is that these firms, given their global reach and influence, could be pressured by their home governments or other external actors to use this information in ways that could compromise China's economic stability. By phasing out the Big Four, China is seeking to eliminate these risks and ensure that its financial infrastructure is fully under local control. For global businesses, these developments are a clear signal that the landscape in China is changing. The reliance on the Big Four for auditing and compliance in China is diminishing, and companies will need to adapt to this new reality. As China continues to assert its control over critical sectors, the implications for international firms are significant, staying competitive in China will require new strategies, closer partnerships with local firms, and a deep understanding of the evolving regulatory environment. The era of unfettered access to China's financial markets by foreign firms is coming to an end, and the future belongs to those who can navigate this complex and rapidly shifting landscape. So, what does this all mean for global businesses and the accounting industry? First off, it's becoming increasingly clear that the era of unfettered global expansion by international firms in China might be drawing to a close. Companies operating in China are now facing a more complex and restrictive regulatory environment, one where local partnerships are no longer just an option, they're becoming a necessity. For the big four accounting firms, PwC, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte, this trend likely spells a significant reduction in their market share in China, one of the world's largest and most lucrative economies. The Chinese government's push to phase out these foreign firms from domestic operations is part of a broader strategy to tighten control over sensitive sectors and reduce dependency on foreign entities. As a result, Western companies may need to rethink their approach to compliance and auditing in China. Relying on local firms might become unavoidable, but this transition isn't without its risks. One of the major concerns is trust. Many foreign companies are wary of the reliability and transparency of audits conducted by Chinese local firms. Historical instances of inaccuracies and lack of rigorous oversight have only deepened these concerns. This skepticism could lead to a situation where foreign businesses and investors lose confidence in financial reports coming out of China, which could, in turn, reduce investment and trade between China and the rest of the world. The geopolitical tensions between China and the West, particularly the United States, are only exacerbating this issue. As relations between these superpowers continue to strain, the mutual distrust is spilling over into the business realm. The ongoing U.S. regulations, like the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act HFCAA, which threaten to delist Chinese firms from U.S. exchanges if they don't comply with stringent audit transparency requirements, illustrate this growing divide. This atmosphere of suspicion is making it even harder for businesses to operate smoothly across borders. Moreover, as China moves toward financial decoupling from the West, the likelihood of Chinese companies pursuing overseas listings, especially in the U.S., is diminishing. This means less cross-border financial interaction and fewer opportunities for global investors to engage with Chinese markets. The financial ties that once bound China and the West are fraying, leading to a decline in trust and collaboration. In the long run, this shift could result in a more isolated Chinese market, where the exchange of capital and ideas with the rest of the world is significantly reduced. For global businesses, the message is clear, adapting to this new reality is crucial. Companies will need to develop strategies that account for the growing complexity of operating in China, 
including closer cooperation with local firms and a more cautious approach to compliance and auditing. The days of relying on the big four to navigate the Chinese market are coming to an end, and the future will require a deeper understanding of the local landscape and the geopolitical forces at play. As we watch the logos of the big four gradually fade from China's skyline, it's clear that what we're witnessing is far more than just a blip in the regulatory landscape. This is a calculated shift, one that's driven by a broader vision of national security and economic independence. China is crafting a future where control over critical sectors like auditing is firmly in the hands of domestic players, reducing the influence of foreign firms that have long dominated the scene. Think of it like a chess game. The Chinese government isn't making these moves hastily, they're carefully positioning their pieces, planning several steps ahead. This isn't just about responding to current pressures, it's about reshaping the board entirely. For foreign firms, the message is clear, the rules of the game are changing, and if you want to stay in play, you'll need to adapt to this new reality. For businesses around the world, this trend is a wake-up call. It's not something that can be ignored or brushed aside as a localized issue. The implications are global. Whether it's about finding new ways to collaborate with local firms, reassessing compliance strategies, or even rethinking where to invest, companies will need to navigate the shifting landscape with care and foresight. So, what do you think? How will international firms navigate this new landscape in China? What strategies should global businesses adopt to stay ahead in this evolving market? Thanks for watching.